Very dead. We hit him down. We are still subject to a, a very aggressive Shatter the Sky. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game. Today we're playing Mono White in Corset 2021. As always, we're going to take a look at the deck list in its entirety, break down each individual card, then we're going to talk about the deck strategy. How do all of the individual cards work together to form the archetype of the deck? Followed by some gameplay footage where we break down the different play lines and interactions we can find within the new M21 meta. Finally, we come full circle with my closing thoughts on the deck and our future plans for what we're going to do. And uh, maybe if we have any suggested tweaks or edits within the deck or in our free to play versions, we also have our upgrade guides at the end as well. If you find any value within this video, give me a thumbs up, share it to a friend. Let's get right into Mono White Corset 2021. Before we do dive into the deck list, I want to say that the deck revolves around gaining life and creating angels through speakers of the heavens. However, the deck does start out with a single copy of Alset of Life's Bounty. This is a 1 1 with lifelink. We can Pay one, sacrifice Alcide of Life's Bounty, target creature or enchantment you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. Four copies of Healer Hawk, this is another 1-1 one, one with lifelink, however this time instead of sacrifice for protection, we just get flying. Three copies of Light of Hope and Instant, choose one, you gain four life, destroy target enchantment, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Four copies of Speaker of the Heavens, a human cleric, 1-1, one, one, vigilance plus lifelink. We can tap it, create a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with flying. Activate this ability only if you have at least 7 or more life than your starting total, and only any time you could cast a sorcery. Moving on to our true drops, we have 4 copies of a Johnny's Pride Maid, a 2-2. Whenever you gain life, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on a Johnny's Pride Maid. 3 copies of Charming Prince, another 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, choose 1, scry 2. You gain 3 life, exile target creature you own, return it to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. 2 copies of Dawn of Hope and Enchantment, whenever you gain life, you may pay 2 if you do draw a card, pay 4, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token with lifelink. 4 copies of Feet of Resistance, an instant, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature you control, it gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. 4 copies of Revitalize, an instant, you gain 3 life, draw a card. Two copies of Bishop of Wings, a human cleric, 1-4. Whenever an angel enters the battlefield under your control, you gain 4 life. Whenever an angel under your control dies, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. On to our 3 drops, we have 2 copies of Helioid Suncrowned. This is a 5-5 five, five indestructible legendary enchantment creature. And as long as your devotion to white is less than 5, Helioid remains only an enchantment and not a creature. Whenever you gain life, Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or enchantment you control. Pay two, another target creature gains lifelink until end of turn. Two copies of Unbreakable Formation and Instant. Creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Addendum, if you cast a spell during your main phase, put a plus one plus one counter on each of those creatures and they gain vigilance until end of turn. We have four copies of Basri's Lieutenant. This is a 3-4 with Vigilance, our first four drop. Protection from Multicolored. When Basri's Lieutenant enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Whenever Basri's Lieutenant or another creature you control dies, if it had a plus one plus one counter on it, create a 2-2 two, two white knight creature token with Vigilance. We also have two copies, sorry, a single copy of a Johnny Strength of the Pride, a legendary planeswalker coming in with five loyalty, plus one, you gain life equal to the number of creatures you control plus the number of planeswalkers you control, minus two, Create a 2-2 white cat soldier creature token named Johnny's Pride Maid with whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on a Johnny's Pride Maid. A zero ability, if you have at least 15 or more life than your starting total, exile a Johnny Strength of the Pride and each artifact and creature your opponent controls. These spells are accompanied by 16 planes 
and four copies of Castle Ardenvale in which we can tap for five to create a 1-1 white creature token, which is pretty fun. We have a sideboard we are flirting with. We've not filled it out as we are just playing best of one, flirting with Giant Killer, Bounty Agent, Containment Priest, Draineth Magistrate, Rune Halo, Unbreakable Formation, an additional Johnny Strength of the Pride, and a Planar Cleanse. This is going to be an archetype we continue to build and bring in to best of three. That's the deck list. Let's begin to break down the deck's strategies and synergies. How do all of these cards work together? We have some really cool synergies within the deck. First off, it is all of the life gain with our Speaker of Heavens to create the 4-4 Angels. This is easily accomplished through lifelink creatures, Alcide of Life's Bounty, Healer Hawk, even Speaker of Heavens has a lifelink on it, right? Helioid, the Sun Crown, can give any of our creatures lifelink. Every time we gain life, a Johnny gets clicked up, so I really like to use Helioid's lifelink uh, giving ability on our Johnny, just because it could be a 7-7 with lifelink at that point, which is really, really good. Charming Prince can also gain life if we need. The second synergy within the deck comes from Basri's Lieutenant. Whenever Basri's Lieutenant or another creature you control dies, if it had a plus one plus one counter on it, create a 2-2 two, two white knight creature token with Vigilance. This means we want to distribute plus one plus one counters on all of our creatures. And this is done uh, in a numerous ways here. A Johnny does it organically whenever we gain life. Light of Hope can put a plus one plus one counter on target. It can also gain us four life, so we can gain four life and put a plus one plus one counter on a Johnny uh, simultaneously. Or just the plus one plus one counter. And now this is instant speed, so use as a battle trick there as well. Feet of Resistance, another instant speed battle trick. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. It gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. So we really like to prioritize our Feet of Resistance to protect our Speaker of the Heavens while putting that plus one plus one counter on it, right? We also have Unbreakable Formation. That's gonna put plus one plus ones on everybody. And Helioid, whenever we gain life, we can put a plus one plus one on anything as well. So you'll see there are plenty of ways to put plus one plus one counters on all of your stuff. Even Basri, when he enters the field, puts a plus one plus one counter on something. So that should not be an issue. We do have Bishop of Wings. Whenever an angel enters the battlefield, we gain four life. Whenever it dies, we create the spirit token. So that has really nice synergy with Speaker of the Heavens as well. Getting into the life gain, we did talk about a Light of Hope. We do also have Revitalize, a Johnny as well. Uh, we did talk about those a little bit. Light of Hope is nice if we have to destroy target enchantment as well. It's kind of got a lot of value there. Gaining life, enchantment, plus counter. That's really everything we want within the deck. That's basically it. Dawn of Hope is our draw engine, which is really nice. Not only can it create the lifelink tokens, we can pay two to draw a card whenever we gain life, which should be pretty often. So that is the general strategy. You play your creatures, you protect your creatures, you put plus one, plus one counters on your creatures, you attack your opponent, you gain life, you start making those angels, which your opponent shouldn't be able to deal with, right? So you should be able to easily uh, get ahead of your opponent and smash down. With that all out of the way, you guys, this was Mono White in M21. Thanks for watching. I have daily YouTube premieres in the morning. Uh, Western time, I guess. It's around, uh, what, 5 a.m. PST, something like this. And then we also are on Twitch around 6 a.m. PST live as well. And then finally, I really recommend you guys join the Discord. Also, we've got a lot of members in there, all expertise levels from beginner to the top ranked mythic players in the world. So it's a great place to get advice or to just share your experience with a game that we all love. I have to thank you guys all again for spending your time and attention here. You're all incredible. And those of you who go above and beyond to support me financially, y'all are godly. Thank you so much. You're incredible. I hope you guys enjoy Mono White in M21. I know I had a good time playing it. Make sure to watch to the end so you don't miss out on our final thoughts. Thanks again. Take care and enjoy the footage. All right. Mono White. Is it good? Is it bad? Let's find out. We have very few land in the deck. So we're going to let it rip. The Grazer sucks. <laughs> this guy's going ham here.
We need our Speaker of the Heavens to survive, is the thing. We need seven or more life. Um, so we can grab three, four, five, six here. Uh, but we're going to take combat damage, which slows that all down. Right, so we're basically never going to get there now. <laughs> Let's push everybody up. Try to offset some of that damage. Keyword sum of. Right, still like we took three. At 20, we can go to 20. Oh my gosh. We are getting walked on today. Let's try to draw a land. Good game. All right, three land, opening hand. I actually don't mind it. Oh, we should have went for it. That's funny. It's just a nice defender. Ooh, Garrick's upraising. Interesting. We played with this yesterday. Let's kill the enchantment. It's a draw engine. Just take that damage. Brontodon, that's okay. Pretty big. Creature plus life gain, probably. Takes us to 24. Revitalize takes us the rest of the way up. Our bishop blocks the Brontodon. That puts us to 27. Let's make our angel. Puts us up by another 4 life. And we can hit with our flyer. So these speakers should be able just to go nuts. Making these angels here. I mean, green has fight effects all day, right? We killed his uprising, but he didn't even drop a creature with power 4 or greater yet. Right, even the one four four angel is going to be great. Incubation Druid. Lots of ramp. We 
Woof. Pretty nice looking hand. We have some protection for our speaker. And we also have a little bit of aggro with our Johnny. Hopefully we get a few blank attacks in. That's perfect. Do we just formation next turn? I think that's a good idea. Looking for his planes. Deciding on which one to take, I guess. <laughs> uh oh, that's me. This is what I mean. You never know, right? Is it him? Is it me? Ooh. Let's get back in there. This is new. An asset error occurred during your last play session. Validation asset files to ensure stability. This may take a while. Interesting. Has a whole turn of ours passed already? Cry. Sko. Just in time. <laughs> Literally. Just in time. Poor guy probably thinks we're roping him. Not my intention whatsoever. Uh oh. We need to avoid a field wipe for sure. Okay, this is good. Time is fragile. Yet it chews through the strong. We're making angels. Teferi will have to mine us on one of our our guys. And he does our Johnny instead. I don't know if that's the greatest. Right? So he really needs to wipe the field now. Hopefully he doesn't find it, and then we can just berate him to death. We have an unbreakable formation next turn to use. Looking for a Basri, but we also need um, a land to play it as well. The Lieutenant. Ajani is not in play if he shatters as well, so we get to keep our Ajani. 
which is kind of like a double-edged sword for Teferi Master of Time. Really? Huh. Hmm. Hmm. We're gonna look for a Bosri here. Hmm, that is good. We need a Bosri though. Fairy's dead. We hit him down. I we are still see. subject to a, a very aggressive Shatter the Sky. We have lethal next turn. To Fairy, that's okay. I can no longer stand by and walk. Needs to have a land. No, I am not making this up as I go. More specifically, a plains. No, we're good. Got him. So the land is good here. Life gain's there, but the supporting cards aren't. We're being greedy and really hoping to top deck something wonderful, but... I don't know. Three lands better than... Um, no land, so something to hold on to. Maybe we play our Johnny. he uh, exiles it with an enchantment, and then we can kill the enchantment, ideally. Oh, great. That was main phase, though. That's always a good sign. I can just so many counter spells. Interesting. Demir mutate. Missing out on one damage, but holding on, what if he drops an enchantment? He can drop for four.
All right, we're going defensively here for a little bit. We've got these formations, which will allow us to still attack. Resistance will protect us. He might block. He'll block the healer hawk with the serpent. Oh my lord. That's twice in two matches. Cry. <laughs> hey, at least it let us know there relatively quickly. Just in time again, we barely make it. We gain some life, do some damage. Plays his Dyer's Bat, that's never good. Mm 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 mm. We do have indestructible already though. Still risky biscuits though. Any mutations onto that dirge bat is absolutely terrifying. So we're at 27, he's at 5, he is a far superior field to us, and he's cycling, that's, that's good. Almost out of mana though. We have lethal here. Don't block that healer hawk. Take the three damage. Let's do this one first.
Got him. Woo! That was clutch. All right. Let's keep it. Getting a one drop is always fun. It is subject to removal here, though. Done she there. Okay. Hit for four still sucks. Takes another speaker. I mean, he's tapping. I know he's got combat tricks. Right, Johnny goes up, we keep our field control. Gruel just scares the heck out of me. No attacks, that's awesome. Let's blast our formation. Right. Our healer hawk goes up, which is really nice. Speaker of the heavens goes up, which is nice as well. Okay. Okay, okay. Settle down. We have vigilance, so the attack is uninhibited. Down to 11. We're up to 17. Probably just playing his giant. Unless he's got a land. Questing beast to try to remove our pride maid. Ooh. I was trying to get a land. Okay, we get the Pell Collector, cool. We're still at 20. We're gonna put our Heliod out and start giving our Johnny life gain. 
That'll offset his chip damage. Or do we double drop? He's got Heliod out. If he's going to play his god, I'm going to play mine. He takes a land, he gets a ramp, which he did. Playing for four. It is questing beast. Oh no. We can offset uh, all its damage, basically, though. All right, that brings our Helioid out. He can attack with Indestructible. He wants to keep his Devotion so he can bring his God of Destiny out. We have a blocker. We should have attacked with our Johnny as well, forced him to block with the Questing Beast, and then his Devotion wouldn't be there. Oh no, I can't believe we mis misread that. We could have had game there for sure. That's on us. Whoops. Always try to break down your plays after, right? It's okay. You want our style? You got Unless he can cast something for one to bring his god out, we're okay. He fights our bishop to take Helioid off. That's fine. Which right here. Okay, this is actually pretty bad. We should have just tried to stack Devotion up again. Right, because now he's no longer held up on land, and he's got fire. Yeah, this is bad. It would have been that exact play that we broke down with the Questing Beast. That's where it all came down to. We just need to gain life here. We'll do this instant speed so we can kind of trick him. Hopefully. Are you kidding me? What a comeback. Feels pretty bad. <laughs> right. 
God's off the field at least. Nothing to deal with this goblin though, because he could just well, minus two on it. And that's going to be really hard. Holding on. Oh, it just deals two damage to us. No! Good game. All right, that was kind of close, and I think we maybe should have done a play differently there, but I don't know how much that would have helped us. Keeping seven here, two hawks is pretty cool, and we finally see our lieutenant. It's hard to get to. Salt Iron Ramp is disgusting. Paradise Druid? Question mark? Oh. My lord. Three Healer Hawks? That's crazy. Settle down. There's that flash reach blocker, but I doubt it. We need to pull two more lands. Let's get all the life game we can out. If we can gain three life this turn and next turn. Probably should have played our bishop and held speaker so he didn't know what we were doing. Eliminate on a healer hawk, okay. He must have something. Let's take it slow. Holding up our protection. Protecting our speaker. Making our angel. We could have done that on his turn as well, but I just like to get it out of the way. Hopefully we draw land. If not, we do bishop. 
Oh, and he doesn't eliminate the speaker. He leaves it. So now we have our removal up again. And yeah, we're just going to hold it up and smash down. Good game. All right. Mono White Corset 2021 representing. I think it does all right. But all of this life gain just makes me want to run Vito, right? This Mono White deck needs to turn into an Orzhov deck with Vito. I know. I know, I know. We have to do different archetypes. We can't just always play the things that are most broken. But it would help, <laughs> right? Let me know what you guys thought of Mono White in the comments below. I'm live on Twitch every single morning, 6 a.m. PST. And just before that, we have YouTube premieres live. So it's a great place to come hang out with me uh, real time while we watch the latest content that I'm showcasing to the community. If you want to support financially, you can do so on Twitch, Patreon, YouTube. You can even PayPal me if you want. Join the Discord. We have tons of giveaways and competitions to get your hands in the cookie jar. And uh, most importantly, thank you guys all for watching. You're dope. I love you. Take care. Have a great day. We'll see you all tomorrow. Peace.